I want to tell you a story that I told many, many years ago that remains dear to me, particularly because people bring it back up to me over and over again. It's probably the thing I've been asked about as much as anything regarding stories and Bible studies along the years. But it's such a statement in my own life and such a memory of God overtaking me and enabling me to do something I couldn't do. You have no idea how dangerous you would be if you would live filled to the measure with the fullness of Christ. I was headed off to uh, the east side of the country to Asheville, North Carolina to speak. So I was having to go to a part of the airport uh, that was just one large room where you went off into several different halls down to the smaller plane. So it was for a small airport and a small part of the, the terminal. It was packed, absolutely packed. And our chairs were all facing one another. And suddenly I see that the eyes of all the people against the wall are watching something behind me. And it was like a movie because all of their eyes shifted this way, this big around, and they began to come this way. Whatever it was, it was going right behind me. And I'm thinking, oh, I wish I were looking. Are you like that? I'm a people watcher. I was so desperately thought, what are they looking at? And I can't wait to look for myself until it comes all the way around here. And then suddenly in my peripheral vision, I begin to see a little of it. And it is a, a flight of hostess that is pushing up a man in a wheelchair right to the end of my row. And there's nobody between us. And this place is packed. So I want you to know that Jesus went to a significant amount of trouble to make sure that I saw this man. So I wait until everybody else gets more polite, and then I go. And when I look over at him, he was the oddest sight. He looked like he was not one iota less than about 129, and I'm not kidding. This was the oldest looking person I had ever seen. Not only that, but he had gray hair that was down to here. His fingernails were every bit as long as mine. He was clean, but it's just an odd sight. His pants, it looked like that he had obviously lost a lot of weight because they were just bunched up. I'll never forget how he looked, and he was just, his head was just hanging down like this, and his hair was in strings like this. Huh? This is how much God thinks of us just memorizing Scripture but not doing anything with it because the Lord begins to compel my heart, overwhelms me, overwhelms me. Well, I have learned, I've walked with him a long time. I knew by now, that is scary. That God is up to something when he is overwhelming your heart like that. And I just thought, oh, please, God, no. Oh, please, please, God, no. Because I'm already knowing he wants me to witness to this man. And so I say to myself in my spirit, now I'm not talking out loud, but in my spirit, I'm talking to God silently, and I'm saying, I'm sure my mouth is going... Because I say to him, do not make me witness to that man. And now I'm going to tell you, as clear as I'm talking to you now, the Lord spoke to my heart. Then very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you to witness to him. I'm asking you to brush his hair. Lord, that man needs witnessing to. What good is combed hair if a man is lost? And I can tell, Lord, that man, I am your witness. I am your witness. I am your witness. I am your, I am your girl. Me. Me. I got the plan. I got the Roman road. Amen. Still in my heart. I mean, we are just having a fight. I didn't tell you to witness to him. I told you to brush his hair. I thought, I don't have a hairbrush. You know, I fix my hair. And then it's done for the day until I unfix it. And the brush is in the luggage. You understand what I'm saying to you? So I said, I don't even have a hairbrush. And I, the Lord's still compelling me. Come out. So I get up, walk over, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't even have a hairbrush. You know, I was supposed to be thoroughly equipped under all good work. I do not have a hairbrush. <laughs> I walk over, I get right in front of the man. His head's hanging down like this. I lean down like this. I said, sir, may I have the honor of brushing your hair? And he says, what? <laughs> a little louder. Sir, may I have the honor of brushing your hair? He goes, little lady, if you want me to hear you, you're going to have to speak up. <laughs> sir, may I have the privilege of brushing your hair? To which everyone at the airport goes, whoa. <laughs> And every, I can feel every eye just piercing me just like this. And I'm just humiliated. And he looks at me and says, if you want to. And I'm going, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I 
I don't want to. I went, yes, sir. I would absolutely love to. But my problem is, I don't have a hairbrush. <laughs> he says, I have a hairbrush. He said, it's back in my bag. So I go all the way around the wheelchair. His bag is on the back of it like this. I get down on my knees. I unzip this little duffel bag. And I start pulling out his clean undershirts, his pair of pajamas, all sorts of things. And as I do, I cannot tell you the feeling that overwhelms me. I'm just flooded with the love of Christ. I found the hairbrushes. One of those real old uh, bristle ones doesn't look anything like our, our brushes do now. And, and when I stood up, I, I began then. I went over to him and I thought, you know, to tell you the truth, this is what I'm good at. <laughs> I had two girls. I'm good at this. So I just came and I just began to brush his hair and it was so matted that I couldn't even believe it. And so I had to get down to the very bottom of it and I, I just brushed the very ends of it. And then just a little bit, it took us forever. And I want to tell you, I was oblivious to everybody else in that room. At that point, nobody else was alive to me. I just kept brushing and kept brushing until that hair was as smooth as silk. I went back around to him and and squatted down in front of him and put my hands on his hands. They were on his knees. His head was just like that. And I said, sir, do you know Jesus? And he said, yes, I do. I said, well, of course you do. <laughs> that figures. <laughs> I wanted to share the gospel with you. But no, you need your hair brushed. And he told me that his old bride of so many years would not marry him until he came to know Christ. And he said, I was just sitting here thinking to myself, and he wept. I'm about to cry telling you. He said, I was just sitting here thinking, what a mess I must be for my bride. He'd been in that hospital for months, and he was about to return back home. Nobody had cut his hair or anything. I don't know how long it had been since he'd been brushed. That hostess came and put him on the plane, and she came back out, and she was crying. I mean, hard. And she said, what made you do that? And I said, Jesus, he's the bossiest thing. <laughs> she did need Christ, so I did get to talk to her. He knows what our need is. Man didn't need witnessing to, he needed his hair brushed. When we are filled to the measure with the fullness of Christ, you sweet thing. You cannot believe the needs we can meet. We can do what we know we can. And while you're doing it, you're just thinking, that ain't me. That, is, that really ain't me. No. It's God. To obtain information on Beth's teaching materials and for her speaking schedule, visit us online at lifetoday.org. 